Good day grade 11s, welcome to your second lesson in Euclidean Geometry. In our last lesson we learned about the terminology of a circle and in this lesson we're going to be using that terminology or some of it to prove a theorem. And the theorem says the line from the circle center to the midpoint of a chord is perpendicular to that chord. Now it seems very scary to when you look at it like that, but if I show you this little drawing and it says, and this is the statement, if a line is drawn from the center of a circle, so if a line is drawn from the center of a circle to the midpoint of the chord, then the line is perpendicular to the chord. So if a line is drawn from the center of the circle to the midpoint of a chord, then we say that, that line is perpendicular to the chord. So this is what you will be given when you get asked to prove this. You get given a circle with center O and line OP to the midpoint of chord AB. So we get told that this line is going from the center of the circle to P and we get told that it's the midpoint. So what we do, and I've already done it on this drawing, is we draw in, we construct we construct lines OA and OP, OB. And the reason we do that is because now if you look at it carefully, you can see you've got two beautiful triangles. We've got OPA and we've got OPB. Now if we look at those two triangles, what do we want to prove? We want to prove that this line is perpendicular to this line. So if there was some way that we could prove that this angle was equal to this angle, then because they're on the straight line, that would mean that this was 90 degrees to that, and therefore we would have these two lines are perpendicular. So what we're going to do is we're going to use congruency to try and prove that. We're going to look at this triangle here, O, a, P, and we're going to look at this triangle here, O, B, P, and we're going to try and use congruency to prove that these two triangles are congruent. Because if these two triangles are congruent, then it means that these two angles are equal, and because they're on the straight line, that means that they're each equal to 90 degrees, and therefore this line is perpendicular to this line. So let's do that. So we've got in triangle, and I'm going to go this way around, we're going to go O, A, P, O, A, P, sorry, that should be, let me just get the in color out and the rays out, O, A, P, and triangle, O, B, P, O, B, P, do you agree that we know that AP equals BP? Why? Because it's been given. They told us this is the midpoint. So we know that OP equals BP. Why? Because it's been given. We also know that OP in this triangle equals OP in this triangle because it's common. So therefore we can say that OP is equal to OP. Why? Because it is common. Finally, OA and OB were drawn, but they join at the center of the circle to the circumference, which means that they are radii. And since they're both radii, they are equal. Therefore, we can say that OA is equal to OB, and why? Because they are radii. Therefore, we have the triangle OAP is congruent congruent to triangle OBP and Y side side side. Therefore we have that angle angle OPA OPA is equal to angle OPB equal to OPB right proved above proved above above because they're congruent, but angle OPA plus angle OPB has to equal 180 degrees. Why? Because they are supplementary. They are on the same straight line. So therefore, angle OPA has to equal angle OPB, which equals 90 degrees. And therefore we know that OP is therefore perpendicular 
to AB and we've proven our theorem. Now grade 11's you not just need to know how to use this but you also need to prove it. So this is one of the theorems that they may test you on the exam so you need to be able to do it. In grade 11's I have to have to seriously stress this. You can try and learn this by rote learning but I guarantee you that you can have so many theorems. I think by the end of grade 12 you have like 13 or 14 theorems. So it's going to be really tricky for you to learn all of them but if you understand that we're using congruency to prove this then it becomes much easier and you can start realizing that actually you don't have to study and learn them in order to get them right. You do need to study them to make sure you get them right but rote learning is really not the way to go with maths. So please practice, practice, practice. We'll be doing practice examples of how we apply this in the later lessons. Have a great day.